I've had enough of this sneaking around. You've got no choice, love. Now stay put. Hello? Ah, hello. Yeah, we followed her to a restaurant. She met a man, went in with him. Tall, silvery hair, business suit. Miss Porter here says it's, uh... Jeremy Gates. <laughs> God, you're as tough as old boots, Kate. If I had to do it all over again, I don't think I'd start with that bikini. <laughs> well, why not? Made them sit up and take notice, didn't mm. Created certain problems, though. Yes, well, I'm a great believer in using everything you've got. You know, Jeremy, if I had even one ally, I wouldn't need to be talking to you now. Yeah. You haven't. My father's seen to that. Mm. What's that, Eel? Yeah, I think so. Mm. Now, my main problems at the moment are Susan Porter and Tony Grant. What do you mean, forget about it? I don't forget it. it kind of conspiracy is turning out to be not my cup of tea at all. Now listen. The last time I called Arthur Parker, I asked him how he'd managed to recruit a nice girl like you. And he told me. Well, that sounds a reasonable way to deal with Miss Porter. But Tony Grant, that's tougher. Unless you happen to catch him red-handed. It's the independent contract, you know. Can you get me a copy? Well, Grant's contract. Certainly. You're a determined woman, Kate. No more than I have to be. You coming ashore, John? No, thanks. Not this time. Don't suppose you want to talk about what's bothering you, dear? Nothing's bothering me. Something bothering you. No, no. Just ask him. Can I get you anything? Mm. Okay, well, see you later. Enjoy yourself. What's your name? Joe. What do you know? My name's Joe, too. <laughs> I like the way you do that song. Why, thank you. Know something about unrequited love, do you? Something. Cry me a river. I cried a river over you. to so much resistance to doing a job well. Don't let it get you down. Actually, I find it invigorating. Like a few laps around the track before the big race. I know I don't look the type. What's the type? It's what's inside people that make them fall in love. Do I know her? It's one of the girls works here on the ship. Sandy McCormick. Don't suppose I mind saying it. She's engaged to that assistant purser. Doesn't know a good thing when he's got it. Let's try 
Lady's a tramp, love. Come on. Okay. Hungry for dinner at eight. Does we look like that? The gruesome twosome. <laughs> But you wouldn't want to change your mind about that, would you? I mean, just give the world a, a little of what they think they've got already. No, well, I'd feel a bit strange anyway. So long as you insist on thinking of me as the helpful father you never had. So to speak. Think pardon? Never had you. <laughs> Most unfortunate. Now, not personally, Kate, but professionally, you do owe me something. Oh, Lord, I'm due back at the ship. Why don't we postpone the discussion of who owes what to whom until we meet again? All right. You'll still get me that contract. I'm good for my word. So am I. Yes, Mr. Tess, with Mr. Gates, together in a restaurant in Amsterdam. Yes, I thought you'd be interested. Well, thank you for the kind words, sir. Yes. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Oh, my darling, your future does look bright. napkins refolded. Four folds, not two. You must be joking. And I've told the chef to take the sole off the menu. But it's already prepared. Oh, I've had some complaints about the Bloody Marys. I want them all American. Tabasco and Worcester sauce, lemon juice, salt and pepper. Snaker! Shouldn't you be taking all this down? Just who do you think you are? The chief person on this ship, your immediate superior. 
I don't believe this. You better believe it. Now, I've had complaints about dirty glasses, and there's a spot on your shirt. Now, when I get back, I don't want to see any spots, none. Do you understand? Yes. I think I do. Good. You better get your people working. I'll be back in three quarters of an hour. He didn't turn up, that's all. I waited an hour, more than an hour. Well, are you sure you're in the right place? Yes. Oh, come on, don't cry. It's a big creep, anyway. <sighs> Joe was right. Oh, don't you worry. I'm going to get my own back. He's going to be so sorry. I'm really sorry to bother you with this, Captain, but uh, I don't know who else to turn to. Yes, that's all right, Mr. Grant. That's what I'm here for. I'm very sorry it happened. I'll take it up with Miss Laker personally, straight away. Thank you. Oh, I don't care what I get for Christmas. As long as it's a designer label. Only at Woolworths. Philips has invented the ultimate compact disc player, CDI. It doesn't just play music, it also plays movies. And sounds you can see. It takes games into whole new worlds. Philips CDI. One player, countless opportunities. Philips invents for you. When I finish shopping, you know the first thing I do, before I even unpack, I have a magnum. Well, why not? <laughs> I always have my magnums tucked away in the fridge. It's all wet and cold outside and I'm curled up in the warm, all cosy. It's wonderful. There's me and my magnum and everything else can wait. When the phone rings, I let it ring. It's my moment. I have this nightmare. I go to the fridge for a magnum and they've all gone. Chunky cod steaks. Ooh, is new personal watching up liquid? Read my lips. Very new. And I'll prove it. Watch Teller's attempt to clean his salad dressing bottle with an ordinary concentrated liquid. Now watch the easy way with new personal washing up liquid. Its new formula dissolves grease better than that other stuff. See? What a great demonstration. And here's another. If it's greasy, it's easy with new personal washing up liquid. If you want to wash your fine colored clothes in a machine, over time, you'll see why it's safer to use new Draft Ultra. Just putting me feet up, love. Hang on, hunk. You can scrub the greasy luck. I love bathroom cleaning. The hardest part is choosing between new flash bathroom liquid or even newer flash bathroom spray. Just a little squirt all over and sit back. Flash spray easily sorts out that horrible greasy gunge while I wait. Then wipe. Not bad for a little squirt. New flash bathroom does the hard work so you don't have to. My dad says he would like a blue-eyed blonde with her own place this Christmas. Only at Woolworths. Don't Love. ask, just hold. Is that you, Linda? Sandy, where were you? Where was I? I don't recall any problems with the croupier when Wally James was here, sir. Perhaps that says more about Wally than it does about me. Miss Laker, booking entertainment is part of Mr. Grant's job. It's in his contract. If I hadn't rebooked Joe Bailey, we would have sailed without an entertainer at all and a shipload of unhappy passengers. Not according to Mr. Grant. He says that he had another singer lined up and had to let her go. Well, that is simply just not true. Oh, you're accusing him of lying? 
If I could think of something nicer to call it, I would. Look, as I see it... Yes, well, as I see it, we'd all be better off if you did your job more efficiently and let everybody else get on with theirs. Thank you. I appreciate your advice. In the future, I shall be very much more careful. That's just not the truth, Peter. You knew where we were supposed to meet, where we always meet. Can't I make one mistake? One mistake? What about the way you announced our engagement? I said I was sorry about that. And sorry is just a word, and words are cheap. Truth is, you just don't care about me. Do you know what I did this morning? I telephoned home and told my mum I was engaged to a wonderful man. Do you know what she did? She was so happy she cried. She'd have cried even more if she knew how you treat me. I don't see what's being gained by all this emotion. Just because you don't have any emotions. Can't we pretend, just for a minute, that we're civilised human beings? Don't be sarcastic with me, Peter Knuckle. I'm not an idiot. Sandy. Don't. I love you. You say it, but you don't mean it. You're going to be sorry you treated me like this. had the opportunity to congratulate you on making your first arrest. Now come in. You know, John's been giving me a hard time lately as well. Has him? Yeah, but I'm not letting it worry me. I mean, his personal life seems to be intruding on everything at the moment. You shouldn't let it get you down, you know. Since when have you been concerned about my moods? I don't know, really. I suppose it's since I finally accepted the idea that you are a member of the crew. Which I guess was the other night when I allowed you to arrest my companion. You really did a good job, you know. Wally couldn't have done it any better. So I'm which magazine's best buy, am I? Look, this is a, a very small community, and in the same way that I have to be sensitive to John's moods, I should be sensitive to yours as well, and I'd like to think you'd be the same way towards me. If I didn't know you were a chief engineer, I might take you for a diplomat. Now the clothes are wrong. <laughs> I'm extending the olive branch. Are you going to take it? Any strings attached? No. Hello? Oh, right. Uh, what's the name and cabin number? Yeah. Mr. Smith. <laughs> Wonder how many people have come on board under that name. <laughs> Double five four nine. Yeah. Yes, I have to stop off at the restaurant on the way down. Bye. Bye. I have a passenger complaint to attend to. Well, perhaps we could continue this more civilized line of conversation a little later. Certainly. I liked your outfit. It's not bad, is it? It's better without the trousers. I bet it is. Good day, Mr. Taylor. Good day. I told you what you needed was a new approach. I want you to get Joe Bailey to tell you what she knows about who beat up Peter Nuttall. Why? Because I'm telling you to. You're crazy. No, love. You're the crazy one, remember?
This is getting tedious, Susan. You'll do exactly what I tell you, and you won't ask any questions. When I say jump, you'll jump, you understand? Music to my ears, sweetheart. Music to my ears. No, 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 this won't do at all. Put them all but back the, the way they were. The sporter says anything. Tell her I told you to do it. Thirsty. Yeah. I had an interesting encounter with the Lady Percy today. Pleasant one, I hope. It was for me. I don't think it was for her. You sound like you enjoyed it. No, I did rather. What happened? Well, it started when the croupier, uh, what's his name, uh, Tony Grant, came to see me quite properly to discuss a problem. What, a professional problem? Yeah. Well, shouldn't he have gone to Miss Laker? She's his immediate superior. Ah, but she was the problem. I see. Well, what's she done? Well, you know that singer we had, uh, the one that Grant fired? Uh... Joe Bailey. Hmm. Anyway, apparently Miss Laker rehired her. That sounds like a good idea. She's got a terrific voice. Yeah, but that's not the point, Matt. The point is that it's the croupier's job to hire the entertainment. Are you sure? Yeah, it's in his contract. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure, Matt. He said it was in his contract. Yeah, I know, but Tony Grant... Look, I mean... do you want to hear about this or not? Yeah. Fine. Well, apparently, Miss Laker rehired this Joe Bailey without consulting with Tony Grant, who, in the meantime, had hired another singer. Well, of course, he had to let her go. Naturally, he was livid, so he came to see me about it. And you took it up with her? Yeah. And she thinks she did the right thing? That's right. She actually accused Mr. Grant of lying. What about? About the other singer. She said he hadn't really hired one. And you think he had? Well, why would he say he had if he hadn't? Well, why would she say he hadn't if he had? Are you telling me I've done the wrong thing? I don't know. You are. Look, it's just that Tony Grant is such a sleazy character. You are questioning my judgment. I'm sorry, John, you brought this thing up. I thought it was a discussion, you know. I have my half, you had your half. We're both entitled to opinions. You are not entitled to opinions about decisions that I make as captain of this ship. Oh, well, then we better not let the border between professional and personal get so fuzzy. Wait a minute. No, look, I've got a lot on my mind. I better just... Wait, uh... wait, 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 Matt. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, too. Please, I apologise. I am sorry. What's the matter, John? Did you get out of bed on the wrong side this morning or something? No. Why don't you talk to me? Tell me what's bothering you. Sandy. Miss Laker, just what do you think you're playing at? Susan, dear. Try not to get yourself in a mix-up like this again. And then we'll get on much better, won't we? Don't you understand? You're a stowaway. Do you want to get caught? Don't you ever, ever go out of this room again or I'll send you straight back from where you came from. Hello, Peter. What do you want to drink? You worry too much, Matt. Deceptively light on the outside, but serious, oh, so serious on the inside. That's you. I'm just asking, John, just asking. Listen, I can do this bus run with my eyes closed. A few drinks aren't going to send us to the bottom. I'm sure you will join me. You know what's really bothering me? Everybody's leaving me. 
First Wally, then Charles. <laughs> Don't know when he'll be back. And, of course, my wife. Except that, really, she's making me leave her. Life's very complicated, Matthew. Mr. Smith, it's Miss Laker, the purser. Catherine, come in. Father. There's comedy next here on UK Gold with Dick Emery. <laughs> 